Have you ever been obsessed with completing a project? Because I have. Nearly two decades ago, I sketched this character with the intent of telling her story through animation, and this year, I finally released it. Why did it take so long? Well, because I'm a failure. So I opened Blender for the first time and thought, I'm gonna make my character rig and start my film in... Yeah, that was bad. I just gave up on Blender entirely for five years. And then I thought maybe making a game would be easier, but yeah, no, that was dumb too. Also gave up on that. A few years later, I decided to try again with the project in 2D thinking it might be easier because it'd be a little less technical, but I gave up. It, it was too hard. So then I tried Blender 3D again, and you probably think this is the inspirational part of the story, but you're wrong. I gave up again, but this time I stuck with Blender. I learned from my mistakes. In this final time, when I started it about five years ago, I finally finished it. And over the course of those five years of working on this, I have learned so much along in the process, and I wanna take you through what that five-year journey looked like. So let's start from the beginning. This video is sponsored by Mila Note. Your script is the most important part of your short film, except I'm impatient. And writing is hard. And I stared at a blank screen like this forever. It haunted me. Seriously, I couldn't write anything. So I just didn't write. Instead, I had an idea and character designs. So that's what I did. I kept making characters and it's important to make progress and not let creative block on one piece of the process stop you. I made the lead character Watermelon Girl, then I redesigned her again and again and again. And then I also went on to make this whale. And then I started just making random characters I thought might work in the short film. This owl, this frog, this cat, the king, and more. And once I ran out of characters, I needed an excuse to avoid that white void of a screen. So I started making environments. I made this hill scene, this bedroom, neither of which made it into the final piece because I was just designing random scenes without a story. So I wasted a lot of time here because I wanted to avoid this. So after a year or two of just piddling around, I decided, all right, I have to get all these thoughts in a coherent order with the story so that I can make things with a purpose. And I knew that if I didn't, it was just gonna end up in yet another failure. Now, I wasn't quite sure why I was so stuck on the story, but I thought maybe it's not me because I have plenty of ideas, but maybe the problem is this. Trying to work from the beginning to the end of the story was really intimidating because I felt like I had to plan everything out. But switching over to a tool like Milanote, I just started splattering all my ideas onto this board. And it was perfect for my unfocused lizard brain. I would just toss random cards in here anytime I had an idea and go back to creating assets. Eventually, it would become a mess of notes and random thoughts, but with a little bit of a beautiful mind approach, I was able to start seeing the connections and eventually this turned into this. If you think this tool would be helpful for you, I recommend checking out the link in the description below where you can sign up for a free account and try it out. So at this point, the story actually started coming together at a beginning and a middle and an end and a couple events, but things just weren't completely coherent at this point. I needed something a bit more structured. Enter Dan Harmon's story circle. Now the story circle is comprised of eight segments. You, need, go, struggle, find, suffer, return, and change. And each one of these segments highlights a different point of growth for your character. Using this story circle like a checklist, I was able to ensure that my story had some sort of structure with a complete beginning, end, and journey. And just like that, I was ready to begin animating. But wait, I've made this mistake before, and this time I need a... Except storyboards take forever, and I'm impatient. So instead, what about a... Yeah, that sounds good, okay. So I spent weeks on this shot list, putting on headphones and just zoning out, playing the movie in my head and refining it over and over and adjusting. I landed on around 230 shots total, which is a lot for one person. Don't do 230 shots. Do something like 30. Be smart. Not like me. Anyways, at this point, it was time to enter. I quickly realized I was out of my element. I didn't know what I was doing and I was going to fail again. Sure, I had done plenty of animated critters, scenes, loops, and clips for social media, but nothing like a full production. And at this point, I had to pause, which sucks. 
because I'm impatient. But I decided to turn this into an opportunity and not a roadblock. I started creating tutorials of things I didn't know how to do so that I can learn them myself with you as a motivator. So thanks. At this point, I turned to the amazing Blender community. Courses like Pure Percot's animation and rigging courses. CG Boost has some great environmental courses. Club Alexandrov has an awesome lighting course. And then there's also tutorials from people like CG Matter with a rope tutorial. Or Secrets Daily had a lot of little tips that I would continually return to. So with my new big brain, I was ready to return to production. And it was at this point I really focused on just redesigning my characters, environments, rigs, and effects. And I was trying to make everything reusable. I ended up creating my own asset browser of my own effects and models to drag and drop into scenes. And I put these on my channel and Patreon to fund the process and keep me motivated. So again, thanks. Time saving is everything when you work by yourself. I had eight characters planned for my short film and I had to figure out how I was going to animate them all by myself. I spent a lot of time on the design of my characters to make them easy to animate. For example, the main character is the only character with multi-jointed ligaments. The king has no face. The frog basically just wiggles, and I used a 2D image sequence for the main character and animated her face with fast to use tools and after effects. The rest of the animals all use the same eye rig with the wonderful Clado shader, and after I finished the characters, I hopped on environments, creating full scenes I could move the camera around in using geometry nodes so I could adjust things easily to match camera shots. During this time, I ensured that anytime I had something I thought I could reuse, I would package it up and save it into the asset browser to speed up my workflow later. Now for texturing, I used a mixture of my asset pack, clay dough, substance designer, and polygon textures, leaning into large scale textures and chunky details to give everything a toy-like look to match the aesthetic I was trying to achieve through stop motion. At this point, I felt like I was never going to finish because I hadn't completed a single shot. My shot list was like just a desert of never ending progress and it was starting to weigh on me. So to keep myself motivated, I started sharing pieces and projects along the way so that it felt like I was checking off progress goals. This helped keep me motivated. So thank you. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do it again. Actually I am. Now eventually I had every environment and every character and every prop on my list done. So yes, I could finally start. My first few scenes of animating Watermelon Girl were actually very disappointing because it took me so long. So I began looking for tools to speed up my process. One, for example, is Bone Dynamics Pro. I could animate the bodies of my characters and let the computer do all the secondary and follow through animation for me. Learning to rely on tools like this throughout the process was key to my success. A big pain point was the stop motion look. I could render every other frame, but this would result in jittery camera movements. I could animate everything on holds, but this is what I did for my short clips, but I didn't take into account how time consuming this would be for a 13 minute short film, which sucked because I'm impatient. That's when I discovered this beautiful little modifier in the graph menu, step interpolation, which would allow me to break down my keyframes and keep it on twos. And that's animating every two frames instead of one frame, if you're not familiar. Great, I had a solution, but wait, no. Another problem, I had to apply it to every single graph line, and if I wanted to make updates or remove it, it was a nightmare. So I developed StopMo, a free add-on that does all the grunt work for me. Gave it away for free to promote my film, and then I just returned back to production. Nothing was gonna stop me this time. I continued to refine my pipeline, adding new tools along the way, and at this point, I got deep into production. I'm talking 7 a.m. in the morning, working all the way till 2 a.m. at night. This spanned two to three years. During production, I also had my first baby. I set up a card table during my parental leave with a laptop next to the crib, and I worked through parental leave like a madman. After all the writer's block, the technical issues, the production woes, and the burnouts, I found my flow state, and I started moving through scenes in single days. It was amazing, but I completely forgot about... Now, rendering could be the death of most projects. Thanks to my channel partner, NVIDIA, and my 4090 RTX, I rendered the entire film on one computer without the need of a render farm. But that's not to say that the process didn't come without its frustrations. Nothing is harder than finishing the scene, editing it, and then realizing you need to re-render. Then repeating that process five times until you get everything just right. And I underestimated how time consuming this would be. I should have planned ahead and used more Vuport renders, but you know what? I'm impatient. 
Hi, Southern Shoddy here. You can actually win my products for free just by watching my short film. Well, I've hidden this character somewhere in the short film. And if you can find him and enter the time code as a coupon, the first 10 people to do so will get both of my products for free on Blender Market. So have fun, and I'm excited to see how quickly you find him. I also absolutely love fan art. So if you make anything inspired by the film, please tag me at Southern Shoddy.